What's up good people? Welcome back to my channel and I really appreciate you guys coming back to my channel. Please like, subscribe and share to my channel. It really encourages me to keep working hard and keep bringing the best of the stuff that I can up to the best of my abilities. And today I wanted to talk about a very very important uh, discussion and a topic. It's called choroidal nevus and choroidal melanoma. It's something that can make a huge difference in your practice and in your patients because you can literally save tons and tons of your life especially if you are an eye practitioner or even if you are a patient it's really important for you to know what you are dealing with especially if you have got one of the two conditions that I am explaining here so please stay tuned till the last minute last second of this video because there is something really important or conclusive towards the end of this video. So let's go forward. I am bringing a case study about a patient who is a 66 year old male came to my practice in 2017 and has got you know diabetes and he wants to make sure that he is not getting diabetic eye complications and that's the basic reason why he's here uh, and he doesn't know that if he has any eye issues because vision is perfect. When we look at his vision, his vision is 2020 with the current glasses, even though there is a big prescription as you can see here, but still he's coping with it and that's giving him 2020 vision. And this is a huge prescription. Look at this plus 675 and with some astigmatism as well. And he has got some ad, so what? we are giving the ad and helping him see the best and that's fine but the problem is he's a smoker he should not be a smoker we'll come to that and he thinks that there is a freckle in the back of the eye so we put a question mark it could be a nevus it could not be a nevus so we don't know yet we'll look at it and he's on insulin metformin and cholesterol controlling pill and when we look at the pupils, everything looks healthy. And when we look at the front of the eye, everything looks healthy. But when we look in the back of the eyes, that's where we find some positive findings. And that's what I, I'm going to talk here. He got some Hollenhorst plaque. And that's in the right eye. Hollenhorst plaque is like a, uh, it's like a cholesterol clot. So it's like a stuck cholesterol deposit in the artery inside the eye and it can even lead to ischemia or stroke of that area so it's it's an important notice thing and another thing is he got a big nevus there is a huge thing in the back of the eye that looks like a green color and I will show you the pictures and he got some cataracts but the pressures are fine and not a big deal okay so let's look at the back of his eyes what did i see there i see a little hint of some sort of swelling or some sort of discoloration in the back of the eye here and then i focus further and that's what it looks like that's a big thing it's huge it's like seven times uh the disc diameter of the optic disc diameter and that's huge another thing we notice here is you see some white dots here we call them drusens we, he got some drusens on top of that that's not a good thing so we need to investigate that further here are a few uh, a few other aspects of the same uh, pathology that we are talking here so we thought it's concerning so we referred to the patient we referred the patient to a retina specialist and we wanted more uh, opinion on that that what to do about it and what should we you know come up with a plan so the management plan for the patient in march 2018 is that we are referring and having a follow up with the retina specialist for the nevus monitoring and when we look at it we see some fluid pockets in the drusen but overall scans are stable at this visit compared to the last one and then we are still thinking about having a retina oncologist and we are consulting with that and also we not we need to take care of that 
plaque in the back of the right eye and we are making sure that PCP knows about it because because there is a risk of CVA in that kind of patient. CVA means uh, cerebrovascular accident. So we need to make sure that patient, patient does not end up into anything like that. Then the patient keeps the follow-up with the retina oncologist and they did not do the removal or any other therapies for that and the patient comes back in 2021 and that's how uh, this looks like in 2021 we see the swelling or the it's not a swelling swelling uh, but we still see the pathology there and we still see it's poking upwards it's pushing upwards and we still see it you know at the same size it's not getting worse it's not getting better and we still see those drusen spots that i was showing you in the color picture but this thing called oct this one that i am using right now is not a colored one but still the thickness profile is showing me this is the baseline thickness and then all of a sudden it goes up there that's the hump that we are noticing here and here let's keep following up with that we did not do anything we are still waiting for retina oncolo oncologist to take any decision or give us a call that what to what to do further but so far we are still monitoring the drusen and the nevus are still the same size and the patient is diabetic but there is no diabetic complications no complications from that plaque that we talked about before and then patient will continue the nevus monitoring with the retina oncologist that's where we are up till now and let's take a look here in 2022 patient comes back we still see that swelling we still see that nevus here and we still see it like protruding upwards here but still we don't see any any other you know hollowness or fluid in there we are still looking at a solid uh, pathology in the back and we call it nevus until this point is still nevus again another aspect of it we are not noticing any any big problems here so we are gonna keep an eye on that so far we haven't done anything except monitoring and the retina oncologist is gonna give you know a decision on that so far we don't need to do anything about it then comes the management and plan up till this point this is my management and plan retina specialist is gonna keep an eye on that we are still giving 81 milligram baby aspirin to the patient to make sure he doesn't land into cerebrovascular accident and then we'll keep monitoring for diabetic retinopathy and we'll keep an update on the glasses and we keep monitoring the cataracts. So what is a choroidal nevus? Choroidal nevus is a flat or minimally elevated pigmented or non-pigmented lesion in the choroid part of your eye. And it's usually less than two millimeters thick. And it gradually elevates and that's how it looks like. This one is quite big. It doesn't have to be that big to be noticeable. I have seen pretty small ones as well. Some of them I have seen are so small that you say like it's one fourth of the disc diameter. This is the optic disc I'm referring to when I compare the sizes. So, but you look for an overlying drusen and you see whether it becomes prominent with age and it can also get hard and cuticular or sometimes it could also appear as a soft drusen. Soft drusen and hard drusen both can happen in this case. And the growth is pretty minimal. It's usually less than one millimeter over many years, but you know, keep monitoring. That's an important part of it. So when you have a swelling or a pathology in the back of the eye that you refer to as a nevus, you need to know about that big problem that it could end up into or it could, you know, uh, be uh, leading up to is called choroidal melanoma. That's how choroidal melanoma is going to look like. But the nevus is going to be like a flat thing. So you will have a 3D picture, 3D aspect to the swelling when it comes to the melanoma. And that's 
what you need to make sure that you're not leading your patient into. So earlier you catch, the better. Risk factors are extremely important in this case. You need to know that what sort of swelling is it there and how is it growing and what are you looking at and then you can tell is it going to be a risky one or not. The first and for foremost important thing is thickness. If the thickness is more than two millimeters on ultrasound of the eye, that's important to note. If there is a fluid, which is basically subretinal fluid, that you see on OCT. The picture I showed earlier, that's an OCT, and over there, we did not see any subretinal fluid. Or you look for the symptoms. My patient is still 2020 and there is no visual loss, but if there is a visual loss, that's another red flag. And then you also look at melanoma ho hollow. You look for that hollow sign on your ultrasonography of the eye, and that's critical because you don't want a hollow thing on your ultrasound. And then you look at the diameter on the photography. If it's more than five millimeter, that's another red flag. And if you have four or more of these factors, that means there's a 50% chance for this kind of thing or for a nevus to grow into a choroidal melanoma. That's the game changer. That's the point that you cannot ignore being an eye doctor, you have to make sure, or if you are a patient, make sure your doctor looks into these things, the thickness, the fluid, the symptoms, the orange pigmentation, and melanoma hollowness and diameter, all those things have to be taken into consideration, and that's the critical point here. And then comes the management. What would you do if you end up into that? So first of all, as I mentioned in my previous slide, you have to make sure that the patient is whether high high risk patient or a low risk patient because based on those things, you will decide whether it's a low risk patient or a high risk. If the patient is high risk, then you do three to six months follow up. If it's a low risk patient, you just get the annual uh, eye exam for a flat nevus that's a small tiny one and doesn't have any of the red flags that I just discussed. And then another thing is if it's a high risk you make sure you talk to the internist, you talk to the oncologist, you as if it's, if it's a female you make sure you get the breast exam because you don't want the metastasis. You don't want to miss any critical thing that can cost a life. Full skin exam is also recommended. Make sure you get the chest CT and MRI of liver because liver is somehow found to be the most common site for the metastasis of melanomas. And also, we also do CEA, carcinoma embryon, uh, embryonic agent assay. And it's, it's uh, something that uh, is also used for the therapeutic potential and it's also good for a di diagnostic potential because it's a very sensitive test but it's not specific so it's important to do it anyway so when you do this all you also make sure that your retina specialist or retina oncologist is going to do some sort of radiation therapy which you, which we call plaque radiotherapy or you also do anti-VEGF, depending on how much subretinal fluid is, you decide that how much and how frequent you are going to give those injections, the anti-vascular endothelial growth factor injections. And that you do for the first two years, and they have been shown to minimize the ultimate vision loss that you can have from the radiation therapy and the fluid changes and all those things. Sometimes you also add sector photocoagulation, but again, it's all based on the retina oncologist and retina specialist that what they are looking at and what what do they 
you know, predict this uh, condition to have a prognosis. Depending on patient to patient, it has so much variability. So you need to make sure where you are at and then, you know, decide accordingly. Patient to patient decisions, patient to patient management is all that matters here. And what are the takeaways? Early detection and treatment is important. Of course, you can't miss it. If you are a good eye doctor, if you're a good eye practitioner, this thing is very easy to pick and make sure you don't miss it because it can cost a huge life. Coordination of the care is very important and you have to involve retina oncologists in your team and monitoring, monitoring and monitoring. A nevus could be very benign for a long time and then all of a sudden it turns into a malignant melanoma or uh, you know uh, choroidal melanoma that's why we bring our patient every time annually and we also stage it we also take pictures we look for all those high risk and low risk things that i was discussing earlier and then we decide accordingly that when the patient should be following up and what should we do next these are my references and thank you so much for listening to this all if you have any questions please ask me in the comment section i will be more than happy to answer but my conclusion here is make sure you talk to your doctor about it if a doctor tells you that you have a freckle in the back of the eye that's what he's talking about a nevus and if you have a nevus Make sure you are getting a good follow-up with a good ophthalmologist, with a good eye care practitioner, or with a very good uh, doctor of optometry. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.